Indonesia is home to many different kinds of people with their traditional cultures and of course traditional food. One prominent traditional food that exists in Indonesia since long time ago is tempeh. Tempeh is a type of food that is made out of fermented soybeans. Tempeh is commonly consumed due to it being cheap and also a good source of nutrients. It is known that beans are a rich source of protein. However, tempeh also contains dietary fiber and superoxide dismutase, which can eliminate free radicals. It was also reported that a phytoestrogen, equal, derived from soybean isoflavone, had a suppressive effect on prostate cancer. In this video, we'll be showing how to make tempeh and also the important role that proteins play in tempeh. First, the ingredients required to make tempeh are 500 gram of soybean. Next, 2 teaspoons of tempeh culture, also known as bacteria of the rhizopus gene. Finally, an abundant amount of water is important in making tempeh. First, place all the beans in a large bowl. The bowl needs to be significantly larger than the beans to provide space for work. Next, Pour enough water to cover all the beans and leave them for at least 12 hours or overnight. After being soaked, rub the beans together with bare hands in order to remove their outer husk. At the same time, the beans should be easily divided to two parts. This has to be done until at least 90% of the beans are dehulled and halved. After some of the husk is removed, a simple step to get them out of the bowl is to pour enough water to let the husk flow. The husk can then be filtered and removed. After beans are dehulled and halved, prepare boiling water and pour beans into the water. Ensure that there is enough water to cover all the beans. The beans are then cooked for 40 minutes. After the cooking process, remove the excess boiling water using a colander or a sieve. Place the beans on an empty tray and let them air dry for at least 30 minutes or until fully dry. After the beans are dry, place the beans back into a large bowl and add the 2 teaspoons of tempeh culture. Mix the beans and the culture until all beans are fully coated with the culture. Scoop out some beans and fill a ziplock bag until a quarter full. Spread the beans on a flat surface and wrap the beans tightly with the bag. Ensuring that the beans are tightly packed will result in a better appearance for the tempeh. Next, use a needle to pierce several holes through the ziplock bag. This is to ensure that there is enough oxygen for the culture to ferment the beans. After that, leave the beans in a dark place to ferment for 36 to 48 hours. First, the culture uses up the available nutrients from the cooked soybean to survive and grow. After 12 hours, the beans are softened due to the breakdown of its constituents by the culture. After 24 hours, the culture starts to form a mycelium. This mycelium helps to hold the beans together. At 36 hours, the mycelium continues to grow thicker and at 48 hours, mycelium has grown sufficiently and tempeh is ready to be used. At 72 hours, the nutrients of the soybeans can no longer support the growth of the culture anymore. Hence, the mycelium structure starts to weaken. As the mycelium is unable to be regenerated by the culture, from this, it was found that the structure of the tempeh is provided by the mycelium as a product of fermentation by the tempeh culture. How about the proteins? During the fermentation process, the proteins in the soybeans are being hydrolyzed to amino acids by the culture. 
a research showed that the amount of amino acids is 3 to 10 times more than the amino acids found in soybeans. It was found that the proteins that were reduced are albumin and globulin. This suggests that the culture utilizes these low molecular weight peptides and amino acids for its own growth. This results in more intermediate sized proteins being formed and accumulated. Hence, the hydrolysis of proteins and the formation of new proteins help give tempeh its distinct flavor and aroma. To prove this, we decided to ferment rice using the same culture. Rice mainly exists as carbohydrates and contains much lesser protein than soybeans. A similar structure was yielded through the fermentation process indicating that the culture is able to ferment carbohydrates as well. However, the taste and aroma were very different. It was found that the rice tempeh had a very pungent and alcoholic aroma. The taste of the rice tempeh was very bland with the alcohol aroma masking any sort of flavours. This indicates that the breakdown of different constituents by the culture results in a different taste and aroma, showing the importance of proteins in the production of tempeh. We also fermented other beans such as green beans, black beans and edamame beans. All beans managed to be fermented and resulted in their own tempeh. However, in the same case as the rice, the resulting aroma and taste were noticeably different. For the tempeh observations, we found that for the soybean tempeh, it had a desirable aroma with a slightly bitter but nutty taste. For the edamame tempeh, it had a slightly undesirable aroma with a non-bitter nutty taste. For the green bean tempeh, it had an alcoholic aroma with a very bitter taste. For the black beans tempeh, it had a strongly undesirable aroma with a slightly bitter but strong nutty taste. For the mixed beans tempeh, consisting of black beans, green beans and soybeans, it had a desirable aroma with a non-bitter nutty taste. Different beans contain different protein levels and also different types of proteins. Different available proteins indicate that the fermentation process will not be the same for all beans. Hence, the specific protein content of soybeans is what gives tempeh its distinct aroma and taste. Tempeh is a food that only essentially requires two ingredients, soybeans and tempeh culture. Although it may seem simple, the process behind the formation of tempeh is incredibly complex and its distinct flavour and aroma are thanks to the proteins found in soybeans. Thank you. Why not?